This podcast is brought to you by Kempower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I am your host, Francie, and today we have a pretty exciting episode for you as we move into a new realm of the electric vehicle industry, all about adapters. Today, I'm joined by Kyle, who you know well, and Robert Hayes, Manager of Public Charging and Customer Experience at Ford Motors, here to talk all about the access to the Tesla supercharger network through the adapter. And this podcast goes live as Kyle is actually in New Jersey on the scene getting all of the details. So if you really want that deep dive, which I know you do, stay tuned to the Out of Spec Reviews channel where you will be getting all that video and information and details soon. But today we're going to cover it just kind of briefly, but get some of the answers that we want because this is really new. And, uh, you know, as some people might say, it's a little squishy. We're learning. And this is really going to set the stage for how EVs that have been running with the CCS standard are going to be able to charge on the Tesla supercharger network, totally changing the public charging game. Robert, welcome to the Out of Spec podcast. Thank you, guys. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. And thank you for, you know, being willing to come and explain to our audience all about what you're doing. So maybe I'll pass it over to you, Robert, to just kind of set the stage of where Ford is today with the adapter and this collaboration with Tesla. Sure. So again, thank you guys for, for having us on. And um, we are super excited to share uh, the news today. So when this goes up, um, our customers will be the first non-Tesla vehicles to gain access to the supercharger network across the United States and Canada. It's something that we've been working on for almost a year now. As you guys know, we were the first automaker to sign the agreement with Tesla back in May of last year. And today, when this goes up, February 29th, uh, will be the, the day. So we're really excited to, to turn the Tesla supercharger network on for our Blue Oval Charge Network customers and get our Ford EVs out there charging at Tesla. Well, I'm super excited. And as Francie mentioned, literally as this podcast goes live, I'll be plugging in an F-150 Lightning with the adapter into a supercharger, confusingly at a random supercharger in New Jersey. I'm sure there'll be an explanation as to why in the Out of Spec Reviews video. But Robert, talk to us a little bit. Obviously, the, the vehicles have the CCS uh, combined charging system plug on them. Tesla uses J3400 NACS uh, for their plug type. The adapter in the middle is partially the uh, the cool bit because that lets them interface. But then there's also got to be some communications. There's got to be a whole bunch of back end stuff going on. Can you give us a little insight into what is happening when you take a Tesla handle and plug it into the adapter and into your Ford? Sure. So um, starting you know starting when this this uh, podcast goes up. We are going to start pushing uh, a software update to our vehicles that's going to enable plug and charge capability with Tesla superchargers for our Blueable Charge Network customers. That's that's the the big exciting uh, update that's coming to the vehicles that that's going to enable them to in experience that same plug and charge um, seamless activation that that they know and love today um, at a brand new provider. The adapter itself is is another exciting uh, exciting feature that's going to roll out today. Um, our customers are going to have the ability to use their, their Ford Pass account to, to order a complimentary adapter from Ford. Uh, so all customers are going to need to do is, is log into Ford Pass. They'll be able to tap through to connected services or visit Ford.com slash fast charging adapter. We're going to have the form pre-filled for them once they log in with all their shipping address and everything. And they just have one button to click that says reserve their adapter and it'll be on their way to them. So we are that, super, super excited. Yeah, that keep is it simple. epic. Mm -hmm. how, how long until people get their adapters? Do you have a rough time frame? So orders will start uh, when this goes up on the 29th of February. We expect adapters to start shipping by the end of March, but we, we understand that customers are going to be very excited for these. Uh, we're very excited to get them to them, um, but it is going to take some time to get to get all these adapters out the door. Definitely. Okay, so really cool. So it's for the Ford Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning customers that can log on really seemingly pretty simply, get their order in for this adapter, but they do have to make that step. They do have to request it, right? It's not just gonna show up at your doorstep. And Correct. transit. Transit yeah, owners? So, yeah, so uh, 
Our right. customers will be able to have uh, our retail customers, so our, our F-150 Lightning Mustang Mach-E and E-Transit uh, retail customers will be able to use that, that experience at Ford.com slash fast charging adapter to reserve their complimentary adapter between today when this goes up on the 29th all the way out until June 30th. So all of our customers have that window to claim their free adapter. Uh, we are, yeah, we aren't just gonna uh, just gonna randomly ship. Uh, we also want to make sure that that step is really important that they validate that their address is correct. Uh, you know, people people may have moved since they bought their car, so we we d <laughs> we didn't want to just automatically start shipping adapters. And our Ford Pro Fleet customers, so our customers who have Mustang Mach-E, F-150 Lightning, or E-Transit in their large commercial fleets, they'll be approached. Uh, separately by Ford Pro to handle getting them their adapters. Okay, totally Understood. makes sense. So can you can you talk to me about the adapter, um, which is like, is it because Ford, Ford vehicles are relatively low voltage, which means you need quite a bit of current to get high charging power, especially on lightning when you're getting up to 175 kilowatts peak, I think, think I've seen on that car. So we're getting up close to 500 amps on that thing. Can the adapter go full send, full speed on version three superchargers? Yes. Yeah, so the the adapter that, that we will be providing to customers is is rated at 500 amps continuous. Um, so we will be able our vehicles will be able to achieve their full DC fast charging speed on version three superchargers with our adapter. And the adapter is Tesla made or Ford made? It is designed and engineered by Tesla. OK. And so is it up to a thousand volt capable? I know none of the Ford vehicles today are that high, but is it a thousand volt 500 amp? Is that the rating that? Yeah, that is the rating on, on the adapter we'll be providing. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Dang, this is going to be crazy. It's so cool. And for the viewers who don't know, I'm about to leave on a massive road trip in a Lightning across the country using the adapter, uh, which will be cool. And Robert, that actually brings up some questions. So what chargers can I hit along my way? Because I, I imagine that Tesla is not going to just like turn on the entire network at once, or are they? Or where can I even go with this thing? Great question. That is, yeah, that is a good question. And that gets into something that that's important for our customers to know. And, and, uh, and something that I think the audience will be pretty interested in. We've been, uh, our customers will have access to more than 15,000 Tesla superchargers across the US and Canada that will not include all of them. So we're being really transparent upfront. Older version two superchargers are not being open to non-Tesla EVs. And the, but the vast majority of version three superchargers are. So starting on the 29th, uh, we will have over 15,000 Tesla superchargers available to our customers. So even on that day one, it's not like a rolling turn on. It's just like, bam, rock and roll. And then the Ford, I guess, will know in the sync system what chargers I can hit. Is that how that'll work? So we will be pushing an update to the Ford Pass mobile app and to the, the public charging um, or charge assist app on the vehicle's touchscreen that will roll out again on the 29th. That will, that will be, allow customers to identify which Tesla superchargers have been upgraded and are capable of charging their vehicles. They'll see an uh, adapter needed symbol in the app to let them know that they, they need their adapter. And then if they happen to not have their adapter with them and they wanna filter out stations, we're adding a new filter to those tools that they can, they can go in the settings and they can restrict, uh, remove chargers that need an adapter until they, until they get their own or if they forget to bring it with them on a road trip. Okay, okay. makes total so, sense. Go ahead, Francie. Robert. I show up, I'm navigated because of the update to a Tesla supercharger station. I have my adapter. I get there. How do I, how do I make sure if I've never done this before that I'm doing it right? Not only applying the adapter to the situation, but also starting the charge. Sure. So for our Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning customers, they, uh, they will start receiving that over their update to enable plug and charge. And we're going to, again, that's all going to, our goal is all of this is going to be triggered starting at tomorrow, you know, for recording this now, uh, starting on the 29th. So um, once that update's received, it is that easy. So all you'll need to do is you'll rock up to a supercharger, you'll park, you'll grab the, the NACS cable, connect it to your adapter, connect it straight to the vehicle, and we'll handle the rest from there with the Blueville Charge Network and Plug and Charge. Um, if customers want to activate using our Ford Pass mobile app or the public charging app on their sync touchscreens, they can manually activate um, when, when they arrive as well. So if customers somehow do get their adapter before they get their software update, there's another option available to them. And, on and the what end, way should I orient the car, the vehicle driving up to the Tesla supercharger? Yeah, a, 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 a topic of much discussion. So um, Tesla has been working uh, to improve accessibility to their sites. I know uh, some some folks online have noticed the the mass bollard extinction event that's happening out there. Um, you know, posts are being removed, parking stops are being removed. So there there's a lot of good stuff happening that will make it easier for our customers to charge. 
we're providing tips and tricks at, at that Ford.com slash fast charging adapter hub to give them suggestions. In almost all instances, it's going to be possible for the Ford EV to park in the parking spot to the right of the supercharger they intend to use. So, I mean, when I get there, I'm going to, I'm going to try to use the, the, you know, if there's a par parking spot one to the right of the end of the, the end of this thing, and we, hopefully we fill in from there and uh, we don't, uh, we don't cause uh, a lot of parking congestion, but it is something that, that, you know, is going to be a, is going to be a thing moving forward. Yeah. And I've seen this in Europe too, where like, okay, I, I did a video once where uh, pretty much everyone, it was kind of perfect. There was a huge line all back in supercharging spots. And of course, for the viewers who don't know, in Europe, the supercharger networks open 70% of the network is publicly accessible. So it's already working and doing well over there. It's not like anything new is going to happen in the US. We already know what's coming. And all of the vehicles with a charge port that's non-native to Tesla kind of can, uh, you know, kind of uh, congregate on one side of the network and all version three chargers do site level load distribution. So you can pile a whole bunch of cars on one side, have one break, you just literally one stall that may not be used. And then all of the ones with the native charge port locations can go on the other side. So this is also solved with version four. We haven't seen version four chargers, just, just dispensers yet, but Robert, will those also be open today? Yes, everything, uh, all, um, all upgraded version three superchargers and including uh, including the the ones that have the V4 dispensers as well as Magic Dock superchargers. You'll also be, if, even if you don't have your adapter today, you will be able to use the Blueville Charge Network manual activation or plug and charge with the Magic Docks as well. Uh, so is that where you hold the button down for a couple seconds on the supercharger itself? Yeah, Tesla made that update. Um, so now all you'll need to do is, is hold the hold the button release the Magic Dock adapter. And then once you have that plug and charge update, when you plug that Magic Dock into your Ford EV, we'll handle the payment from there with the Blueville Charge Network. Okay, and I just have two last questions really quick because I know we're short on time. The first is, can the adapter work for AC charging? No, it can't. It, it does not have the AC pins populated. And that's something that that we are also trying to get the message across that, that um, we don't want customers trying to use adapters and, and mix and matching types. If you're at a DC fast charger, you need a fast charging adapter. If you happen to have an AC adapter, we don't want you using them with DC fast chargers. We want you to keep them to AC chargers. Yeah, 100% makes sense. And then the last question is more on the plug and charge side of things. Is it Mac ID or ISO 1511A? I know we're getting into the weeds here, but is there a certificate that's exchanged? Like, how does it know that this is the vehicle and that's the charger? Because there's two main ways of doing that. Yep, this is a this is an ISO 15118 plug and charge implementation. Same as how we, we have implemented plug and charge for, for our customers at, at other networks around the world. Okay, very cool. And if um, just, you know, as this rolls out, if folks do run into any questions or issues or anything, where should they go for support? Tesla or y'all? There is, uh, for our customers, we've created a one-stop shop. It is, it is that it is as simple as Ford.com slash fast charging adapter. We're going to have information there on, again, how to reserve, how to use, how to find which superchargers you can and can't use, troubleshooting tips if something were to go wrong at a Tesla supercharger. And then if something does go wrong and they need more support, our customer relationship center is available to help them. Great. Robert, I really appreciate your time. Uh, like Kyle said, I know this was a quick update, but really excited and uh, grateful to have you onto the podcast to not only inform us, but our audience. And then also, like Kyle mentioned, we're going to be on the road testing this firsthand. So it's, it's really cool to see. This is definitely a shift in the industry, and it really is going to paint a picture of what tomorrow will look like for public EV charging. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, are, we are so excited for the opportunity, and we are so excited to see our customers out there with their adapters charging. Thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you, everyone, for plugging in with us for another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. Let us know what questions you have. We're going to be playing with this ourselves very soon, and uh, we'll see you next time on the next episode of the Out of Spec podcast. Bye.